Hey, what's up guys? Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market bounces back a bit. In this video, we will take a closer look at the Plans B stock to flow model, then technical analyst who correctly predicted Bitcoin recent top of $52,000 will explain why BTC might drop below 20 k very soon. This video is brought to you by BlockFi. BlockFi is a crypto platform that lets you leverage your cryptocurrencies and put it to fair use. At BlockFi, you can earn an interest rate on your crypto, buy sell crypto and borrow cash. It's like all in one crypto bank. You can earn up to 8.6% APY on your crypto holdings, up to 5% on Bitcoin, 4.5% on Ethereum. Now you can also earn 10% APY in crypto on any new stable coins for limited time only. You do not have to sell your crypto and pay high taxes. Borrow money against your crypto at rates as low as 4.5% APR. BlockFi uses ACH that allows users to deposit slash withdraw funds with no fees. Do you want first Bitcoin rewards credit card? Join the waiting list and receive unlimited 1.5% back in Bitcoin on every purchase. Sign up today and earn up to $250 bonus when you open an account with the link blockfi.com slash in the description box below. Let's take a look at the crypto market. The entire cryptocurrency market is just under $2 trillion. Bitcoin's dominance is at around 42% and Ethereum dominance is in mid-18%. Today, Bitcoin is trading in mid to high $43,000. It recovers slightly from this recent dip where it dropped below 40 k The short-term trend is slightly negative, but the long-term one remains positive. On the day, BTC is up by 2.6% and the week is down by almost 9%. Ethereum is back about 3000. It also had a rough last couple of days. It dropped to almost $2,700. ETH also became more scarce. Since the last EIP implementation, this protocol burned more than 350,000 ETH at this current value of more than a billion dollars. Not bad. Today, ETH is up by 5% and is down by 14% of the day. Cardano in day also has a decent bounce back, it's up by 4% of the day. Fun fact, Ethereum is 5 times larger in market cap than Cardano. Cardano has some catching up to do if they want to create some real competition to Ethereum. Solana has a nice increase on the day, it's up by more than 10%. That makes Solana the best daily performer asset, but on the week it's down by 8%. It seems like Solana is stabilizing at around $140 to $150 per coin. Dogecoin is closing top 10 listing, is down by 10% of the week. Let's see how long will it take before the Dogecoin will be out of the top 10 listing. Here we have a very cool chart from Willy Woo where he compares Bitcoin price to S&P 500 price. As we can see some decent correlation between Bitcoin and stock market. The upper trend seems to be correlated, but the performance is a totally different ball game. Yes, indeed, Bitcoin is way more volatile. During the corona crash, Bitcoin dropped by 53% in just few days, while S&P 500 dropped by 34% during the same time frame. Now, BTC dropped by more than 20% while the stock market dropped by 4%. But let's also not forget to mention the upside volatility. S&P 500 went from 2500 points all the way till 4500 points. That's a 80% increase. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin had a bigger drop where it went below $4,000. Just recently, it surpassed 50000 bucks, so that's going to be slightly less than 1200% increase. That's a big difference. The volatility is the price you have to pay to the higher rewards. Here we have another quite interesting chart. It represents Bitcoin price and this red line represents the price of a liquid Bitcoin supply floor. A liquid Bitcoin supply increases as more and more BTC live in crypto exchanges. Currently, a liquid Bitcoin supply floor is under $39,000. The current Bitcoin price is just few thousands higher. Just in the beginning of 2020, the Bitcoin supply floor was at $3,000. Therefore, we see a huge supply shortage on the Bitcoin network. It does not mean that Bitcoin price will not drop below the illiquid supply floor. Some models are useful, none of them are perfect. Speaking of another and most popular model, let's take a closer look what is going on with the Bitcoin stock to flow. As of the time this recording, Bitcoin price is slightly below $44,000. And this current price is on this light blue color of this confident interval. 
Bitcoin price spent most of the time in this inner confident interval that is represented by this darker blue color. Only a few times in the Bitcoin history the price went outside of this inner confident interval. In the downside, we had one time in 2015 bear market, another one was 2018 bear market, and here we have the third time where BTC is trading outside of this normal price range. It does not mean that stock to flow model is invalid. Let's also not forget that historically, Bitcoin went outside of its confident interval upwards as well, at least four times. Once in 2011, then two times in 2013 and 2014 bull market, and the last time was in 2017 bull market. Let's see if BTC will be able to bounce back to its normal range. Certainly the plan B, the creator of this model thinks so. He tweeted yesterday asking what will Bitcoin December closing price will be. Stock to flow model says 100k, logarithmic regression model says 30,000. His money is of course the stock to flow model. Well, let's see what will happen. There is a few months left until December 2021. This next technical analyst believes otherwise. A chief market strategist, a Gareth Soloway, who correctly predicted that Bitcoin will top at $52,000, now is saying that Bitcoin can drop below 20k. Let's take a look. Both the crypto markets and the stock markets have slid over the past few trading sessions, and these are calls that our next guest has predicted. Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com is back. Welcome back, Gareth. Now let's talk about Bitcoin first and then stocks. I remember last time you were on the show, a couple of weeks ago, you were calling for a top in Bitcoin of $52,000. Uh, miraculously, it got to exactly $52,000 before taking a slide. In the short term, what you're probably going to do is go test this head and shoulders neckline. It's what we call a retrace to the scene of the crime. So I still think you have upside to about 50 to 52,000. Anyway, uh, I'll let you uh, shed light on what happened over the last yeah, couple Yeah, absolutely. Of so, so first of all, it's great to be back. It's been too long, David, and, and it's good to be back with you. Too long, yeah, and, exactly. um, and for sure, I mean, so what we've seen here is is a technical retrace. And, and this is what I've been talking about for those of you that have been following my Bitcoin analysis is that generally when you have a breakdown in a trend, so you have this trend line here, this was that big head and shoulder breakdown to 30,000. There's a tendency for any chart, doesn't have to be Bitcoin, it could be anything, but it's a tendency to go back to what we call the scene of the crime, which is the breakdown trend line. So you can see all this chop here, a lot of bearishness, then people started to get more confident buying Bitcoin up, then bullishness exuded in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency market, getting you right back to that trend line. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, the charts trigger a sell-off. You know, and again, whether it's, it's Walmart and Litecoin, whether it's El Salvador or whatever it may be, the key is the chart can often lead you there ahead of the news. And you don't know what the news is going to be, but ultimately it does show us more often than not that a fall was going to come here. And that's exactly what it did. And then we're seeing again, a follow through today. We haven't really taken out the low pivot from that down day. That's the technical level I'm watching right now. If that gets taken out, then you're likely going down to around the 40 to 41,000 level right here. And then all the way down to 30,000. And you guys know my longer term projections. Uh, even though you're going to see lots of bounces and it could be three, six, maybe even nine months, eventually you're going to get to the 18 to 20,000 marker on Bitcoin. 18 to 20,000 marker. So you're long term bearish. All right. So, so to phrase this correctly, I'm near term to midterm bearish, extreme bullish long term. So for me, Bitcoin is the future. Cryptocurrency is the future. Blockchain is the future. But it just needs to wash out this. I mean, there's there's so much liquidity. And one of the things that you know I've talked about in previous interviews is how there was going to be a liquidity crisis. There was going to be a deleveraging crisis that was going to trigger the fall in not only stocks, but also in cryptocurrencies. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, we see this Evergrande situation developing in China, which basically three hundred billion in debt that looks like it's about to default. We'll see if the Chinese government comes out and saves the day. But that's the deleveraging event that could be starting it. I don't think it's going to cause a crash overall, but I think it's the beginning. It's kind of like a tremor before the big quake hits, if you will. What, 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 what does Evergrande have to do with the crypto markets, though? So, so it, what's amazing about it is, is that stocks, commodities, it's all tied together, right? So you have all this money that has been going to other assets outside of, of currencies, essentially, outside of the dollar to get away from, you know, the printing of money that the Federal Reserve has done. So, I mean, how many times have we talked about how no one wants to be in dollars? They all want to invest in the stock market because at least in the stock market, you can get 
you can get upside in stocks, you can get dividends and so forth. If your money is sitting in an account, you're getting basically you're losing money because of inflation, especially with inflation these days. So what happens is all this liquidity gets pushed into the market. The Fed, the government's been sending checks to individuals. It's all going into cryptocurrencies and and stocks. And you're seeing the leverage. You know, you're getting so much leverage out there, whether it's four to one margin, whether it's 10 to one. Sometimes I've even heard crazy things like 100 to one. And what happens when you get a deleveraging event like in in China it scares people and they pull back. And all that has to happen is a pullback causes a downshift, which then triggers margin calls, which then causes more selling. And it's kind of like a snowball effect to the downside. Okay. All right. Let's go back to cryptocurrencies and your targets. Long-term bullish. What exactly do you mean by long-term? After six months, after 12 months, in five years, what do you mean? Yeah. So, you know, again, the timing is so, so hard. I would say in five years, you're looking at north of 100,000 and then probably within 10 years, 500,000 on Bitcoin. Ether is going to be a huge player as well, although I do think the NFT craze right now is a bubble and has to be washed out. I also think that a lot of the altcoins, I think you'll have some altcoins surviving, but the altcoins remind me of the dot coms. And, and for those of us that traded through and lived through the dot com bubble and burst know that a lot of those dot coms went away and were no longer around. But I do think that, again, and you have to start thinking that the longer term is a shift away from fiat currencies into cryptocurrencies, into gold, into things that you cannot just print out of a printing press like the Federal Reserve and the government essentially is doing. Hold on. Let's back. Let, let's let's rewind here now, Gareth. You, yeah. OK, so Bitcoin went from 10,000 to over 50,000 in less than a year last year. Now you're saying it's going to take five years to climb to 100,000, which is about double where it's at currently. Are, are Basically, are you are you telling me that the biggest runs in crypto are more or less done? Is that what I'm in the short term? Right. So so let's let's look at cycles. Right. So so if you look at the high pivot on Bitcoin and by the way, this is a great this is a great segue. We'll get right back into that question. But when we're looking at a lot of people were asking me why Bitcoin is rallying here and then why is it going to collapse? And what are the things that on a technical basis? And remember, I'm a technical trader is that I've been focusing on is previous cycles. So if we go to the 2013 cycle. All right, where you had this massive run up in Bitcoin, where you topped out around 1,250. Look at the pullback. It went to 500. It then had the huge bounce to 1,100 and then dipped all the way down to 100. So liken that to what we've seen recently. We saw 65,000, which would have been the equivalent right here. Then the dip to 30,000, which was the equivalent of 500. Then the rally to 52 to 53,000 here. And the idea is that you should roll over here and go to the downside. Now, again, that's just one of the cycle moves in Bitcoin. But let's take a look at the 2017 move. 2017 move rallies up to 20,000, corrects to 11,000. You then get the bounce back to 17 and then a move down to 5,000 or sub 5,000 before it kind of bottomed out and then started to move. Another key pivot here is that if you look at the years between high pivots, so the high pivot was 2013. Four years later, 2017. Four years later, 2021. So my idea is that you'll likely have about four to five years from the 65,000 high before you get above and break to 100,000. And that's kind of where I'm getting that, just to go back to your question of where I believe that it'll take that long for Bitcoin to go back to about 100,000 or north of 100,000. He indeed called correctly the top where BTC hit $52,000. Mostly, he was relying on this support line for an early BTC price movement, then in transition into the resistant line on this recent Bitcoin price movement. Now he believes in the short term to mid term, BTC can drop as low as $18,000 to $20,000. That's an approximate 2017 all time high. In which case, the previous resistant line will translate into the support line. Overall, he remains bullish on the long term Bitcoin cycle. He believes sometimes in 2025, BTC will hit $100,000. Currently, Plan B believes BTC will hit 100k way sooner than that. In fact, by the end of this year. Well, we have two cases, one is bearish, another one is bullish. Let's see which one will play out correctly. Let me know what you guys think. Are you currently bullish or bearish? And what price will Bitcoin close 2021? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.